Fair enough. So, uh, I think we were talking about it, and I think it's a good place to start. Um, we were going to talk about Catholic corruption. Is that good? Are you cool with that, Darna? Sure. That's fine. If, if, if Jacob's ready for it. Okay, I'm going to hit. Okay, that's fine. All right. So, we are um, recording. Welcome, everybody, to the Friday Night Roundtable. Oops. Uh, starting off with Lasoya. <laughs> okay. Well, we have uh, Thunderbolt here, also known as Jacob, and uh, he was going to. He did a video about some about Catholic corruption, and you and me, I think, stand together on this when it comes to people misjudging uh, the Catholic Church. So, did you want to get us started? Talk about what uh, issues you have and what you've seen. Um, I guess like when it comes to the issue of corruption. I think a lot of people have legitimate criticism in regards to how, like, certain Catholic clergy handle certain issues, like, for example, like, the sex abuse scandals and all this stuff. Uh, I think many people have legitimate criticisms of the Catholic Church in regards to how they handle it, but I think people blow that out of proportion to the point where they end up, like, condemning the Catholic Church as a whole instead of, like, Pacific clergymen. Said. Like, I can understand like, uh, condemning certain clergy. I can understand that specifically, but it's not really a good idea to condemn the entire church as a whole. Because of, the, because of specifically of that. East Coast. Hmm. You want to say something, um, Lasoya? I just want to make an open statement. Cool. Yeah, I was actually muted. I was trying to sit there and talk to you. Um, wouldn't you say that the dogma of the church and the way that it's set up, though, encourages that kind of behavior? Um, I wouldn't say it encourages. I don't think it does it intentionally, if you, that's what you mean. Like, I think a lot of what... I, I think one of the main things is has to do with the whole issue of celibacy, which is not a dogma, but a discipline by the, by the church. Because there's a difference between... Um, a discipline and a dogma. Okay. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about the celibacy um, within the Catholic Church? Even, as a, you know, even, even though that the Bible says it is all right for priests to marry. Um, I think I think with, when it comes to the issue of celibacy, I think the argument can be, can be made either way. But that since I'm not, but let's for sake of your argument say that I was become I was going to become a Catholic priest just for sake of your argument, I would do the best I because Paul even himself said it, it's like best to be celibate, if if to serve God, in a sense. I don't remember the exact verse off the top of my head, but I think you get the point. But the argument can be made either way as to whether it's appropriate for a priest to be celibate. Yeah, but like, what do you, uh, you, you yourself actually think about it? As to whether a Catholic priest should be celibate? Yes. Um, I don't really care either way, to be honest. Because, like, it's to me, I can understand where they're coming from in terms of that. So, I don't really care either way. Um, I'd like to add something here. Um, I, I think that a, um, a reasonable explanation can be provided um, for Paul preferring people to remain unmarried and celibate. Uh, not everyone may necessarily accept it, but I think that um, Paul's expectation is more reasonable when you place it in the context of someone who believed that the end of the age was coming during his lifetime. And since that didn't happen, and seemingly, you know, the church is here for the long haul, I think that the requirement of celibacy is something which needs to be seriously reevaluated. Well, that which is one of the reasons why it's considered a discipline and not a, 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 doc, a dogma or a doctrine. So, because there's also Eastern Catholic churches who don't have to require their churches to be celibate, but are still in communion with Rome. So it's not it's not a, a stand up it's not a um, 
it's not a dogma where it, where you can't question it. It, it can it it does have the possibility of being changed. Yeah, and I think um, Smooth and Instigator and Fractal Machine have a good question. Uh, what are your thoughts on um, this actually causing some of the priests uh, to have sex with children, to be one of the uh, um, instigators? I'm, I'm trying to read the questions. I, hold on. Um, yeah, talking and reading can be hard when I do. Sorry, I'm, I'm reading the questions, so give me a minute. Oh, no problem, dude. I understand. Don't shoot bubble your mind. Okay. And, and one of those this might be priests and being and having sex with children. Um, I would say it might be used as an excuse by pedophiles to try and have sex with children, but I don't think it's the sole cause of it, if that's what you mean. <laughs> what do you think, Michael? What's your thoughts on this? Well, uh, my biggest thought, uh, as far as this past week is that I, I was ready for the Catholic Church to get beyond this, and still... There, there are more uh, allegations coming forward, more scandals being brought to light. Um, this is just from uh, this week, where the uh, Prime Minister of Ireland is really taking the, the Catholic Church to task for basically obstructing justice and trying to keep the truth from coming to light. Oh, wait, I actually saw this recently. Yeah, um, and... Which every is, every I, time I, I think it's going to die I, down, it comes back up again. It's it's so pervasive. Which I can understand. I don't have a problem with people criticizing the Catholic Church in terms of how they handle certain issues. And uh, I, it's been a while since I read, so I'm going to have to read it again. Um, I'm going to read this, so go ahead and talk, okay? Okay. But before you start reading that, what do you, how do you feel about them transferring people from one part of the, uh, from one, um, oh man, cathedral to another, one um, region to on, another? On paper, I can understand why they would do it, but in practice, it's a failure. I will say that. So on paper, how does that work? Then? Like in my, like, it, like on paper, it might, it might be one of those things where because. W one thing you have to remember is the Catholic Church has this uh, has this uh, policy of like not uh, requiring their priests to keep their mouth shut in certain when it comes to like confession. So like for example, if you go to a confessional booth and you like like confessing the the the, um, the priest your sins, the church the church puts the seal on you as the priest to not reveal the secrets of the confessioner. If you do, you get excommunicated. Okay. Actually, uh, Soya, what Thunderbolt said is is something I've actually heard of where the priests who've committed their transgressions have gone to the bishop in charge of their area and gone to confession with him and confessed. The problem now is that bishop has to keep it private can't do anything, can't even call the police on it because it was told to him in confession. Right. So the only thing you can really do with the guy now is move him out of there discreetly. Right. But yes, it will cause a scandal when this gets found out because you didn't do anything about it, but you're basically caught in a catch-22. Mm -hmm. So what do you really do with him? Now, as a parishioner, now as a parishioner, if you knew of something going on and you wrote a letter and sent it to the bishop, then the bishop can do something. The question is, did anybody really do that? In this case... Now they could take that priest and reprimand them. In this case, it was and 19 even take it to, individuals. And even take it to calling the police. 19 different individuals from 96 to 2009, all making a very public case about... Uh, you know, complaining about abuse from their priest, and in all 19 cases in the Cloyne report, uh, the church got in the way of the investigation. And so the prime minister is, uh, after just going public and, and making a, a really heated uh, speech about the Catholic Church, he's waiting for the Pope to respond. And so... That's where we're at right now. Right. 
What do you think, Violet like Graceful? Well, I think Fractal got into this in the chat. It is that the, the sacrament of confession is being exploited as a loophole to prevent uh, criminal prosecution. And something, a decision needs to be made in the church to create exceptions, you know, for the privacy of things said in confession to be broken. Um, you know, particularly when it involves something like this. Um, otherwise, you're just going to have people continue to exploit this loophole and use it as a way to avoid being rightly prosecuted for their crimes. Hmm. I would actually agree with you there, uh, Chris. Right, now that takes, that, 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 that would take actual law to change because I'm actually taking law classes and that's one of the things it is protected you can get in trouble uh for talking past that it's um it's actually kind of interesting but uh so would you suggest that law being changed in the u.s or wherever it's occurring or is that what you're trying to say yeah this obviously would need to be formulated quite well um but you know the privacy complete confidentiality expected between clergy and the people going to confession um, needs to be rethought it can't be entirely closed because it lends itself to situations like this uh, where I think you know the institution is being exploited in a way that I don't necessarily think they intended now, would you suggest a re complete removal of the law, or just it be appended to allow certain crimes like this to be in uh, included? Yeah, so, some kind of emendation um, to make certain exceptions. Okay. But I mean, where would you draw the line? Would it be like, rape and murder? Would it be criminal theft? What what exactly would we uh, would we do? Yeah, I don't know exactly. I, I haven't really thought this through entirely. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where where a line could be drawn as to, you know, specifically what um, crimes someone could admit to in confession and not expect legal repercussions. I don't know. Hey, Turbo. Yeah. Incest, yeah, I think incest would be one would probably. Okay. So um, to continue okay. the theme of the Catholic Church uh, sweeping things under the rug, this this uh, other incident happened just two days before uh, the Prime Minister of Ireland made his speech. This was in Philadelphia, where uh, conveniently Bishop Regali was. Uh, resigning you know after uh being charged with a grand jury of uh basically obstruction so it, it's when when i see this like every day you know something new about these cases i i just wonder have they changed have they done anything that w really is uh changing the the institution Is this just like the media inundating us with different stories from all over the world? What are your thoughts on that, Jacob? Um, I would... Sorry, um, sorry, I'm looking at the article right now. Um, I think um, what needs to be kept in mind is that these kind of cases don't just happen in Catholic Church. I, they also happen in Protestant churches as well. Because, like I said in my video, it, pedophilia is not just a Catholic problem, it's a human problem. Also, I think the media, and this is just a, a personal opinion, I think the media like, supports more Catholic case, cases than Protestant cases, because the Catholic case is bigger. Actually, Jacob, yeah, or Bolt, it doesn't just happen in just the Catholic and Protestant churches, it happens everywhere. Good point. 
Hmm? Okay, I'm actually trying to find statistics to see if I can find other denominations that have a similar problem, but I'm, mm -hmm. having, pro I'm having trouble actually finding anything because the Catholic scandal just keeps overshadowing everything. Lasoya, in, in the chat room, uh -huh. they're the Saints' Revenge, Ernest, he's a friend of mine, he actually protested in uh, Philadelphia mm -hmm. over yeah, that I've bishop. Hey, Saints, would you like to be invited to the call, man? You can talk about it a little bit if you want to. That's right. Saints, I'm looking at you. I just sent him an invite. Oh, okay. Cool. Keep in mind is that I'm not defending any of these actions. I'm not defending how to handle these cases. I'm just saying, like, I acknowledge it. Thunderbolt, would you agree that it could have been handled differently from the onset? Yes. And that if the if criminal charges were pressed on at least, I'm not going to say all, but at least some, would that have changed how this would be viewed? I would say yes, definitely. Because I understand from what I've been able to find on it, this goes back to the 1950s at least. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, but things simply just were done differently then than they would be done now or in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. About how things would be handled. I'll dispute that. Hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. What, um, I guess Saints, the Saints Revenge is a little busy at the moment. Um, so I guess, Jacob, uh, I. Obviously, a lot of this is coming from the persecution that you're seeing on YouTube, I assume. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here we go. Yes, two to one agent. Uh, no, I just uh, no. added him again in case he missed the, the ad. So, talking to you about the, um, let me talk to you about some issues that I actually have with the Catholic Church. Okay. okay. And then, because these, I actually made a video after the Stigma Dame decided to make a, a video about how the Catholic Church actually worships a fish god, so I figured I would give my two cents on that. Um, my hey, who's, issue, who's crinkling? Uh, that, it was me for a second, I'm sorry, okay. I'm, done. I'm done with it. Hey, what, what did Stigma Dame, did you just say fish god? Right, he did a video saying that oh, the... Boy the um hat or something like that honestly i didn't watch most of it i gotta be honest but once i saw fish god i stopped um, what, is, what is a fish god a god that's a fish i think he was trying to make the um the point that catholicism is known for uh absorbing a lot of traditions from pagan and other religions oh, god, not, not, what is stigma thing gonna get it <laughs> fair enough but um, just to continue along with that, so a lot of the issues that I actually have heard, and I understand that there are some reasonable reasons, but let me ask you this. Can we both agree that if you are if you take Christianity as being true, that the, um, the best and only way to really get to Jesus is through yourself? It's a personal, uh, personal thing. Like, I can directly talk to Jesus. Would we both agree with that? I would say yes. Okay. So why would the church still hang on to confession? Because it's, it's because it's considered a sacrament. Okay. But it's not necessary, right? Um. Can, can, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Is it necessary to go to confession in order to have your sins absolved? Um. Because I know the answer of how it used to be, but I don't. You're you're in there now. I don't know if they. I don't know them. that. I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head. I have to get back to you on that. Okay. Well, in the past, there were certain sins depending on what the sin was and about how much you did it. It's it's. I, I'm sure you're aware of what I'm yes, talking about. Yes. Mortal and venial sins. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, would you say that that is a correct doctrine based on what you know right now? Um, I believe it because like. We have to remember when the mortal venial sin was first uh, started. It was mainly used as what to help priests like determine the um, the seriousness of the sin. Okay. Like for example, like for priests, when people are going to confession, they they it was they had to they had to find ways to determine how severe a certain sin was. So that's how they introduced the mortal venial sin system. Okay. Just a way, a way so every priest would be doing the same thing. You have a list. Yes. Severe, moderate, and not so severe. Moral and do with each list. It's a little more nuanced now because, like, yeah. moral sin is is it's 
the most obvious definition of moral sin is if, if you like purpose it for your back. Hold on, Phantom, can you mute your thing? We're getting some a little bit of feedback. Like, sorry. It used to it used to be more black and white, like in like 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 in the past, but now it's like like more like they look at the whole, the Catholic Church would look at from look at it from the whole picture. Like, I'll give you I'll give you an example. Let's suppose that you're married and you get you get very furious at your wife, and because of that, you get you you go out and commit adultery. Just, you, because you're so angry, you want to take it out on your wife. The Catholic Church would say, would try, to try to determine if what you did was a venial or mortal sin. They'll try to say, okay, it depends. Did you do it on your own free will, or did you do it because you were so angry you weren't thinking clearly? Really? Still, you're wow. making choice. Well, uh, what? That is drastically different, Dave. I'm just, oh, making, I'm just giving you an example. I know. I'm just saying that is. There was right. no middle ground when I when I was back in the day. Now a little more different now. Just right. Like, but regardless of the reason, there was no middle ground. That was a mortal sin. See that? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, never mind. Go ahead. No, I actually interrupted Dark. Dark, go ahead. I apologize. No, I was just saying that um, regardless, no matter how angry you may be at a situation you yourself are still making the conscious choice to do something. Right. Right. Um, okay. Fair enough. I, you know, it just seems like that takes away the whole, it seems like there's the two standards to me. That was something that always bugged me. Like, I, I, I can't have a personal relationship with Jesus unless it's a moral sin. I don't understand. Where when there. if if you, if I would be allowed, I would like to interject when it's my turn. Yeah, involved. go ahead, Ken. Yeah. Sure. Is it is it my turn? Sure. Yeah. Oh. I choose you. Okay. Okay. Um. Anyway, I had a conversation with Brian J a while ago about this, and um, I was saying that you know there's no such thing as an innocent person. As soon as you're born, if you can see, touch, feel, okay then you're not innocent. I'm sorry, the closest thing to an innocent human being is someone with with no limbs at all, blind, and who can't see themselves. That's the closest thing to an innocent human being. The only innocent life forms are, well, animals, really, because their whole existence is based around instinct, not necessarily free will and thought, although, yeah, animals that might have subtle feelings like, you know, preferable, more preferable food. Uh, I know that different lions in the pack have very, like, there's like at least three to six different styles of hunting that lions use. Um, but as far as innocence goes, you know, if you're looking for innocence, you know, as far as mammals go, you need not look at humans. And Brian J. immediately told me, you know what, this sounds like a lot like the argument that we're all sinners, except I made the argument without a religious point of view. Now, we're all going to be met like screw-ups. By nature, we are screw-ups. And if we're, we were created in God's image, that tells you a little bit about God. God knows that he's made mistakes, and that's why, ideally, God would be okay if we made mistakes. I made a wood. I think it's my first voiceover role ever on YouTube. I made a video called Talking with God, where I play the voice of God, and my subject is a friend of mine. Um, there's lots of little hidden jokes in there um, about how people discovered God in general. But I think overall, the video makes a point that God isn't perfect, perfect either, and therefore neither are we. It's the same reason why computers and all of our technology messes up, because we're not perfect. If we were perfect, um, then our technology would never screw up, ever. Um, so yeah, problem, I'm done. Okay. okay, the problem I have with that argument is that it doesn't take into account of the doctrine of the fall. 
like if for if we're saying that I've, ne I've never uh, uh, Jacob, I'm gonna you're gonna have to explain that to me. I've no, I, I don't know what the what the doctor of that is. Could you so you could you elaborate on that? Like yeah, doctor, just, the doctor, yeah, just, not, like when, when man, or no, sorry, not man. God created man and woman in His image. They choose to rebel against them. Oh, hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, sorry, I'm being interrupted. Oh damn it. <laughs> Just give him a second to get back. Well, yeah. while we're waiting on him, since we have people... Sorry here. about that, I got interrupted. Uh, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. Okay, continue with your conversation about the Doctrine yeah. of the Fall. I was talking about the Doctrine of the Fall. Like, mm -hmm. if we're made in God's image, then he create us... Like, a court, this is according to Christianity. and Christianity. Like, if we were created in God's image, he created us perfect. Yet, the, he, these, his creation choose to rebel against him by, by disobeying his authority. So that's the problem I have. The argument that God, that God, that God is not perfect, and that if God if man made in God's image, then that would reflect on God. But, but that argument doesn't take into account the fall. This video has been. Okay, fair enough. Uh, did anyone else have anything they wanted to add to this? I I think we were going to um, move on to the uh, the. the uh, I think it's a more lighthearted topic, uh, Darnak oh. wrote about, about yes. the use of names. Sorry, can I just have a closing comment on this? Yeah, go ahead. Whenever you have an organization, at some point, there will be faults in it, and there will be problems. Mm -hmm. What you got to do, and what should be done, is how you handle and address the problems. No matter what they are, no matter how minor or severe they are. And in the case, what we've been talking about earlier with the Catholic priests and the whole sex scandal, just remember that they are people and they do make mistakes just like everyone else. However, because of the position they hold, we hold them on a higher level and expect them to do more than what we hold ourselves to. Right. Yep, everyone in positions of power has an S on their chest. Yeah, I mean, to to a degree, I have to agree with Saints Revenge. I recognize that we make mistakes and such, but I mean, there are certain things that are are insane mistakes that that really we can't take back, like pedophilia and such as that. Oh man, that just grosses me out. It serves no fucking purpose. Yeah. So I, you know. Of course, we do have a psychologist on here who can tell us, uh, Michael, is the redemption? Do you make mistakes of that nature? I think he just wants to be kept out of this topic. Um, being an atheist, I don't believe in, in the, the magic side of redemption, but I do believe that people can be of an, a repentant state of mind, no matter what it, crime it is that they committed. But I think that uh, it, it is strange that in some religious cultures... Uh, some of their prophets and heroes are known for pedophilia. You know, and, and they, would, they wouldn't feel repentant at all if they were the ones that did it, because that's their role model. Alright. Yeah. Um, this, the next topic, again, I think Violet and Graceful um, was uh, commenting on the light-hearted topic of euthanasia. Now, I think this was based okay. off of... On, let me stop this recording. Yeah, dark. Okay. Let's... Recording stop. Okay. Stop. Hammer time. <laughs> <laughs> I set him up, you knock him down. That's the way it goes. I ran out of cat puns, that's why. Yeah, Agent of Doubt was trolling me the entire day with cat puns. Oh, yeah. Like, really crappy ones, too. Positively crappy ones. So, Jim the Crab, while we're waiting for that to come up, I mean, does it make it right whether it happened 200 years ago or not? I mean, pedophilia, even if accepted as a norm, messes up kids like crazy, wouldn't you agree? Well, that would depend on, on if you believe in absolute morality. 
if you believe in objective morality rather than subjective, then why mm-hmm. would a matter of 200 years change the rules? I, I'm not saying it is. I'm saying it's wrong regardless of when it occurred. Honestly, man, I think that sex is kind of un- overrated and there's so much better crap than, that, that a kid could be doing, you know, instead of having sex, you know, pretending that pedophilia is okay. There's just so much other better stuff that you can do. You know what I mean? What I thought about you know, what would generally my kid, if I decided to have cubs, I would give him the entire world on a platter, but I would keep him safe at the same time. If my kid said, Hey, I wanna go skydiving, is that dangerous? Yes. Trust me, there's worse things that can happen to a child other than you know, a sexual experience. If my kid wanted to go snowboarding down Mount Everest, I would try and give that to him. If my kid wanted to blow up a building, I would try and get something as close as humanly possible to make that experience happen. Maybe I can find, like, some business that's not doing so well, you know, that, that closed down recently. And since it's going to be demolished anyway, I'll give them the tools to demolish it himself. So, I mean, you really have to tiptoe, you know, just to make sure that your kid gets everything he wants. But at the same time, the moment you give your kid everything that he wants, you know, is the moment that, you know, he's going to think that he's always going to get everything that he wants and you can't spoil him like that. Trust me, there are, there are worse things. I mean, that's that's the road to becoming a villain right there, is making your child believe that everything will always be handed to them. Trust me, there's a lot worse than, than pedophilia. You know, pedophiles think that they're the shit, and they're not. Okay. Especially... All right, I have to get going, I'll see you guys later, okay? All right, later. see you, Thunder. That's a shame. I really wanted to hear that, um, hear more from him on this type of guy. Well, I'm sure you can talk to him later or we can have it at another time. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. I mean, like someone else since he's... Um, but anyway, I'm done. Whose turn is it? Uh, Dar. Dar is going to have to start the new segment, so... Yeah, that's what we was going to ask, 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 ask you to add Turbo. <clears throat> I like Turbo. He's cool. Turbo, I'm gonna pick up so that I can hit hit the board. There you are. Turbo, I'm gonna pick up so that I can hit. Pick up. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Okay, I'm starting the new recording. Hey, I'm starting the new recording. Turbo, can you? I'm I'm working on it. He's working. He's working on doing it. He just got fat fingers and can't move the mouse. Oh man. All right, now. That offends that offends Michael a little bit. All well, right, this so. is segment 2 of Friday Night Roundtable and I would like to talk about uh, euthanasia and the right to death. All right, so go ahead and start it off for us, man. Tell us your position, what brought you to this uh, opinion. Um after uh watching a few people in my life actually go through uh, mental and physical um, problems as they got older. Um, um, I saw that many, uh, some of them just wanted it to end. Like um, like my, my dad that raised me uh, went through Alzheimer's really badly before he, he died and he degenerated a lot within the span of three years. Before it, before it got really worse, he had a heart attack and he died. Hey, Dar, um, I, have a, I have a question for you. Yes? What exactly did he want? What exactly what was he looking for? Is, was there anything that somebody could have given him to make him feel better and not have him go down this destructive path or what what did he what did he want well he didn't he himself did not really verbalize um that he wanted something done 
to him, but 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 this is just an, an, an example that I'm using that that um I I've already made the decision that if if something like that starts happening to me or or if I'm in a coma or if I'm paralyzed in a certain way, I will do everything I can to uh, take my own life. Um, uh, this, goes, this goes into that I believe that, yes, everybody has, has the right to life, but I also believe that everybody has the right to death. Well, we are overpopulated, and uh, you know, Patrick Henry once said, give me liberty or give me death. I think that applies here, don't you think? He was a man of principles. In, in, in some ways, he was talking about uh, people's freedoms more than anything else. Well, is that not a freedom to be allowed yes. to choose death? Yes, it is. To me, to me, to me, that is the ultimate expression of of the sentient beings' uh, actual existence is their own choice taking their own life. Um, um, Turbo, were you trying to say something? Uh, you know, pretty much I, I'm with Dar on that. I, I do believe that, that, that people should have the right to end their own lives if they so choose. Um, I, I, I yeah, I mean, we didn't. If, I mean, if, hold if, on, let Turbo finish. If they were really in, in a mental dilemma about it, you know, I mean, there are plenty of teenagers every year who commit suicide just because of mental anguish. Right, and, and for those for those people, I, I wish that they would get some some therapy or some counseling of some sort to try to help them through it because, you know, it gets better. It usually does. All right, you get out of the crappy situation, you move on. For for people that have um, you know debilitating illnesses, well, there's plenty of you know uh, you know life assistance stuff out there that you can you know make use of. Um, <clears throat> if you lost your mental faculties then you really can't make a choice, you know? But if you really, really, I mean, if, you're, if you've got terminal cancer and you're in the hospital already and you're just like, fuck it, I don't want to wait it out, it's going to suck, I can't, right? And then, you know, I believe that you should be able to, you know, be able to say, hey, doc, man, where's the, uh, where's the syringe full of sodium pentothal, man? Shoot me up, let me go. I mean, there are a couple of points to this, though, I'd like to ask, and I, Dar and I have already discussed it beforehand. First, well, there's two, actually. The first one is, is how, how can we determine someone is enough sound in mind to be able to make that logical decision? Because in some instances, someone who would want to kill themselves is probably not thinking about what's best for themselves at that juncture. The second thing is, is of course, if we're going to start doing state-sponsored suicide, then um, how are we going to be able to take care of it financially or economically? Now, I can agree before it comes up that these may be questions that if they're right, they're not something that we have to worry about completely, but these are going to be roadblocks for people who are against it. So I'd be interested to see what everyone's opinion on that is. I can speak as to uh, determining whether or not someone is of sound mind to make those sort of decisions when they are at the end of their life. Uh, most any palliative care wing would have a psychologist on hand that would be a specialist in these issues that would be able to determine whether they should make the decision for themselves or their family or in, in cases that there is no family someone is appointed by the hospital who is not a doctor just a special case worker for these cases so let me ask you this michael you think do you think that there is someone could want to commit suicide that would be of sound body and mind you think that a logical, reasonable person will come to that assumption? Um, I believe a logical, reasonable person would. Okay. Oh, they, think of it. I mean, we didn't choose to come into this life anyway, so we should have the right to opt out if we don't like it here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, violently graceful, your thoughts on this? Yeah, and then I want to actually hear Michael's answer after violently graceful. Hmm. Okay. Um, you know, I, I'm not opposed to somebody making the decision to end their own life. You know, if, like has already been mentioned, um, people are in a sound mind when they make that decision. Uh, where it gets cloudy 
is when someone is not in, in the right state of mind to make that decision or they're incapable of doing so. And, you know, family or loved ones are then responsible for making that kind of decision. Um, I have not thought that through before. Um, and also, you know, the, the religious belief that, you know, God gave you your life and, you know, therefore it's not your right to take it, you know, should not factor into uh, prohibiting people to make this decision who don't adhere to that same religious belief. Okay. So yeah, euthanasia is the state-sponsored version of suicide, and suicide is the person-sponsored version of death. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I'm to remember that. Michael, what what are your thoughts on that, man? What are your thoughts on my question? Um, most of the decisions as to whether to con continue one's own life or not, uh, where euthanasia would be an option as a state-sponsored way to leave this world. Um, th those decisions are based on quality of life and uh, with new advancements in palliative care there are uh, different options available to doctors now but uh, you know even if someone temporarily decides they want to go another week or another two weeks um, there are many cases where they will just hit the end of the road and decide you know they they've extended it as far as they can and uh, what I've seen is there's normally a switch uh, in some cases between uh, pain management and then just uh, giving them sedatives so that they will go to sleep because there there's a limit to the amount of pain management you can actually do to a person um, there are you know once this person gets put in a palliative ward they all of a sudden have an, uh, options such as uh, morphine or any anything that's a controlled narcotic now becomes something that is at the doctor's disposal but there are pains that are stronger than any of the drugs that we have and it gets to the point where uh, they will build up a tolerance to these drugs and the best way to manage their pain is sedatives just to put them to sleep altogether and at that point, uh, a lot of people just opt for do not resuscitate. But Michael, my question is, what about a person, let's say they're, I want to say young, just because that would cause an effect, but let's say that they're mid, mid to late life. Let's say that they're in their 40s or 50s, and they're like, you know what, I've lived a good long life, I want to die. And um, they're healthy? That, and they're healthy, yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd say that they need... Uh, psychological care and they, they need to really uh, address why they are depressed <laughs> but um, you see that's that's the hold on hold on guys the, the, the argument that I made <laughs> but that's that's the question I, that I have and that's what's on the table what, what's being said is that if you want to die you should have that right regardless of if you're in pain or not I, and um, I, my question to you, because you're the one that ha has the actual psychology degree, can a person be sane and want to die and be perfectly healthy? I, I would <laughs> say uh, a person can say that they want to die and be perfectly healthy in many cases, but that would not uh, apply to the, the morality of everyone else around them. No one, no one would be required to help them with this. In fact, it would be wrong for them to do it but uh everyone has the right to swallow a gun um no one right. can stop you from doing that it, it, yeah. at any point until you put the gun in your mouth no one can stop you from doing that it, but you could be charged with a crime after your death and actually part of your estate taken. yeah part of your state taken away to pay for or actually yeah. what's what's funny about that phantom <laughs> Now, Sam, what, what exactly are you laughing about? <laughs> Just this conversation. <laughs> oh, all of the answers are right there in front of you, but just no one happens to look. Then why don't you speak up? Yeah. If a person's really going mad, all they need to do is look for someone who is 
ten times more crazier than they are, and maybe they can tell them how screwed up the world really is. All um, someone really line. needs to do. Um, wait well, a minute here. Let us, let us, let him, let him All right. And then, you, and then you can go out there. Okay. All one needs to okay. really do, which is what most people do anyway, is look for some sort of fellowship or mentoring. I, myself, when I go crazy, I talk to someone who is equally as screwed up, like Ichiro cannot die, or when I was talking to him, I would talk to Aldous Valor about my problems, <laughs> or when I was really, really messed up. I would talk to Shayra because we all know that despite her looking like a Norp, deep down inside she's just as fucking nuts. She just does well at blending in. And honestly, when I, a long, long time ago, a good friend of mine um, wanted to give his knife a nice little blowjob. And lo and behold, a, a month later, someone actually did it for him. You see, suicide's a weird thing. When you ask for it and then change your mind, those who you tell about it just might fulfill your wish. So in the end, you don't really know who you can trust. The point here is, Michael had the point, no one can stop you, but if you're really serious about it, just do it. Don't tell anyone, don't leave any notes, just do it. Because a good friend of mine actually did that with people that he could go to talk to, oddly enough. He had me, he had lots of people, being lots of good friends, but yet he did it anyway. It's one of the most strangest things to hear about any sentient life form having the desire to take its own life. However, there are organisms in nature that do take their own life once their purpose has been fulfilled, but still, that we know that their purpose has been fulfilled, so then they stop living. The question is, what is our purpose as human beings, and do we have the right do we have the right, or is it right at all? Is it doesn't make sense to kill oneself after our purpose has been served, if we find that purpose? This subject, what this subject is really about, is purpose. And in a strange way, you're probably nodding your head right now, thinking this makes this this does make sense, doesn't it? This is about purpose and finding it. People who kill themselves, they have you fulfilled their purpose and just want to go their merry old way, or they know that they truly have no purpose. This is the real question. What is our purpose? Okay, Headless, you wanted to speak? I'm done. <laughs> to address Phantom Lion, <clears throat> this conversation here started out with euthanasia. And all you're talking about is suicide. Suicide is defined as self-murder. Euthanasia is defined as good death or well death. I understand that. Do you, under, do you even know anyone who's been in palliative care? I know someone who's in palliative care right now, and it's my right. foster mother. All right. May I ask you how long they've been there? My foster mother has been there for a good year or, year or so now. All right. Good, yeah, I'd say a couple of years. Thank you. Then you should understand the emotional burden that you're probably carrying because of that, knowing she's there and she's just not dying. What was discussed earlier about pain management goes from being taking care of the problem of pain and just getting to the point of comfort. 
Not really. I, people and, die all the time, so if she dies, yeah, then I, I'll... In palliative care, with the medicine that we do have and the machinery we do have now that's used in modern medicine, you can actually keep someone alive a lot longer in a state that they would have simply died if you didn't use all those things. They can go on, some people will die in a few weeks in palliative care, some will go on for months. They will look like they're recovering, but they're not. So I kind of, I lost the track point, of the bit. point of euthanasia at this point is to, not so much for the patient who's in palliative care, but for the family to let them go. Yeah. So I guess my question is kind of just to jump back on, on track there too. If if we had state assisted suicide, would that not be a burden upon the state when it comes to, you know, helping with the suicide itself? Of course it wouldn't. It wouldn't you're happen. not you're not gonna get people who have uh, mental depression and stuff lining up for euthanasia because they want to commit suicide. This is for people who are that not would be funny as hell. hell if we're not getting actually inside yeah. booths. We're not getting into that with future Rama here, Phantom Lion. All right. Hold, hold oh, on. crap. Yeah. Um, if, I, if I, I can. I, I, I don't think in an overall sense that it's going going to be a financial problem um, if it was state sanctioned. Um. In fact, in all honesty, I think that suicide rates would actually go down if it was put out there more. Oh, crap. We forgot all about the taxes and how the government likes to tax everything. Oh, if people would actually talk about it and talk about their death. Move your fucking hair, Stephen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Darnak, that's actually an interesting concept that I kind of want to talk, and I'd actually be interested to see what Violently Graceful says. But so you're saying that if we allowed suicide, that people would actually get help when they actually don't right now. Yes. And so that would actually lower rates. Huh? Violently Graceful, what's your thoughts on all this, my man? Um, okay. I, I guess I'm feeling a little lost um, after a lot of this. Um, I, I don't really have anything to say that uh, Asian of Doubt already said. Um, that yes, I'm for, <coughs> I'm pro-euthanasia. Um, it just needs to be regulated. You know, it's not something that you can just do snap on a whim. Uh, there needs to be regulation and evaluation of somebody's mental state uh, when they're when they're requesting this kind of service. If I may speak to the positives of what Phantom Lion was saying in his layperson way about talking to someone just as crazy, those are actually uh, some of the things that that we use in group therapy or 12-step programs where we get people that have similar problems and we get them to talk to each other as, as a coping mechanism. And uh, yeah, that's that's the, the best course of treatment for someone that you just meet that's 50 years old and, and healthy and, and wants to have euthanasia, which is very close to the definition of suicide at that point. Okay. Hmm. Is, is there a level to it, though? I mean, if a person is, like, just far gone, would you put them next to another person who's as far gone? I, I would definitely not treat a healthy person as a candidate for euthanasia. I would say that uh, they need to be treated with a suicide watch. Okay. Um, empirical Truth, would you like to join the call to get in on this conversation? By the way, I just want to point out that Empirical Truth is one of the best people I know. And I'm just putting that out there. That's right. It doesn't have to make sense. I, I do have something else to add, add to the uh, okay. euthanasia talk. 
I oh, thought I was in favor. I'm sorry, Ben. Yeah, friend of one joint. Yeah. Ben, you know I love him. Michael, what would you have to add? Um, this is a study oh. that was done in August of last year, and it says that uh, atheist doctors are twice as likely to hasten death for someone who is uh, in a palliative care state. And deeply religious doctors are very likely to not even bring up the option of euthanasia. So, depending on your own personal preferences, you might want to know some of, some personal details about your doctor uh, to make sure that their preferences aren't going to be pushed onto you later on down your treatment. I, I think that's fair, and I think, and then Frendo wanted to bring something up. I, I think that's fair. I, just, I don't. Let's say before we go on to Frendo, can I just interject something with what Agent of Doubt said? What, can I interject mine first, and then I'll let okay, you? Okay, sure. Frendo, I, 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 you know, I, I don't think that doctors should be forced to do it either, too. I don't, I, you know, if a doctor doesn't want to do it, whether it's religious reasons or not, I don't think that they should be forced on anything like that. But that's all I want to say. Headless and then Frendo. Yeah. My uh, agent, that, uh, what I would see as a simple way around the doctor issue mm -hmm. would be you simply, the doctors would not be permitted to bring it up, so therefore the background of the doctor doesn't come into question, but rather it would be the patient or the patient's family is the one who would have to bring it up in discussion. Uh, as per this study that I just shared with you guys, yeah. uh, there are doctors who, even when the patient brought it up, would still stray away from discussing it and try to change the subject. Okay. To try to keep people alive longer than even th those people would want to yeah. be. Mm -hmm. So there, uh, there's still a, a, um, an inherent problem in any any system like that. Yeah. Friendo, what are your thoughts on it, my friend? Um, the, the issue that I think is most important is, in, in terms of the question of youth sure. major, is people who are in a persistent vege vegetative state. Um, not, I mean, because with, with people who are in palliative care, we can as assume, you know, we, we can talk to them, we can interact with them. People who are in a vegetative state, we have no idea um, what their thoughts, what their opinions are. But it takes resources um, to keep them alive. And I, I think the, the I think the ethics are a little touchier, um, and 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 that that's more what I wanted to focus on. Okay, so you wanted to focus on it. Was the, was there something you wanted to to add to it, or did you just want us to well, just um, enhance on what you just said? I I, I just I, I think that's a, a little more uh, the the more interesting issue, um, but I, I'll provide a story um, from my own experience. Um, my grandmother on my mother's side had um, Alzheimer's, okay. and uh, she was in a vegetative state uh, since a, l a little after I was born, so I, I never knew her. And for, uh, for 12 years, she was in a hospital bed, um, and she, she uh, was fed through a, through a feeding tube, and uh, my grandfather was, uh, the, you know, the... the primary uh, uh, manager, you know, he was her husband, there really wasn't any question of who got to make the decisions. And the decision that he made was that when they had to put her on a respirator, at that point, he would just let her die. Um, and that, I mean, that's consistent with most ethical treatments of the subject, that not putting someone on a treatment that would keep them alive is very different from performing a procedure on them that would end their life. Um, but there wasn't really a question that as her husband, he got to make that decision. Um, but a few years later, we had the Terry Schiavo case in Florida where the governor interjected on behalf of Terry Schiavo, um, and he was prompted to do so by her, uh, by her over the wishes of her husband who wanted to let her die. Um, so there's also this element as well, that it's not just a question of should, this, should the state um, sponsor euthanasia, but 
what should the state's role be at all in taking or preserving uh, people's lives when they are suffering from different uh, different kinds of, of terminal illnesses? Because there's that there's that angle as well. There's that um, approach as well of the state. Um, intervening to keep people alive over the express wishes of their family. So um, I, I think that's actually a very good point, and I was going to bring that up also. Um, that's one of the um, reasons why um, us gays really want equal rights to marry so that we can make those decisions when we have to. Um, it's already been agreed upon um, that that the spouse is supposed to have the say over the medical treatment of 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 their spouse if they're in a hospital or not. Um, Dar, reset the recording. It's still recording. Yeah, you're you've hit another thirty minutes. <clears throat> I have something after that. Okay, hold on. By the way, we're going to move eventually to the way they do it at um, that other show that doesn't do as well as ours. I don't know if a lot of you guys have heard of it. And I'm stalling because I can't think of the name. Oh, what, what show would that be? Uh, yeah, Blair? I'm stalling because I can't think is, of the, is, the Magic that, Sandwich. There oh, is that the show where you have the five people sit around and someone calls in? Right, the Magic Sandwich, which oh. is insanely... Um, popular, that's why I was making that joke. Uh, it's actually pretty good. I would suggest people go to it. But um, what uh, what we're going to do is we're not going to rely on this entirely. I'm going to be able to record it from my computer, hopefully coming up soon, once I uh, sue Agent McDowell and get money from him. All right, I'm going to start the recording for part three. Um, check in. Okay, and then continue where you were going. Okay, we'll back to the Friday Night Rounds well, this year is part three, and we're picking up right right where we left off on part two. Uh, friendo, like I was saying, um, in that scenario, it's been agreed upon that the spouse um, has the legal right to choose um, um, what goes on in the hospital. If their spouse themselves is... is 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 um in an accident or is debilitated in in some way um i think it was actually a great travesty that um that that whole terry shiver thing actually happened because while that was going on there was other cases of 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 husbands or wives that made the decision to pull the plug or to stop feeding them um so that they can die and just be let go. So here's my question. I really, the, the way this is done currently, I don't like that they let the body deteriorate and die on its own. I mean, if, if it's going to happen, we, we need to just go ahead and, and assist. I don't like that, the, even if they're not aware of it, I don't like the thought of someone starving to death. And, and Boyo, it, it, there's it, a lot of hopelessness not, in that. Okay. I'm sorry, headless, headless and Michael and Phantom. It's not always starving to death. Sometimes it's not being able to breathe or just basically, or you just withholding antibiotics yeah. and allowing the, the disease to just ravage through and take over and consume you. I mean, how's any of that humane? Suffocation, yeah. uh, ravaging? Right. Uh, Michael, did you want to answer it? Um, we're we're into a, a type of patient that doesn't normally get into that state with the same kind of deterioration as someone who who chooses, and a lot of those uh, patients that are uh, requiring uh, different app apparatuses like feeding tubes and, and such are comatose, and and while someone's comatose after you know a certain period of time people just start feeling hopeless and those are the people that are tasked to make decisions for those people and and not a lot of has uh been promising about that um i'll share with you something that uh w was big news while i was in 
school, it was uh, when Ambien was found to wake up comatose patients with a paradoxical reaction. And uh, all of a sudden, a whole bunch of people were given more hope that their loved ones were m might make it through because there were patients that had been in comatose states for years you know and their bodies had been wasting away and and finally a treatment was found and um a lot of the decisions that are made by family members are all about hope and uh the statistics and probabilities that the doctors will feed them but when it comes to the, they've decided that the person's gonna die that they, you know, they don't want to continue on. That so we're gonna, in one way or the other, we're gonna end the life. I mean, how do you feel about the fact that we let people starve, or we let them be ravaged by the disease, or or whatever is affecting them, even if they're comatose and, and possibly not aware of it? Well, I have two different thoughts about this. Um, some people actually choose that as the way that they leave uh, this world. They choose to not have uh, any medical attention, good or bad. They sign their, their do not resuscitate statements with those specific instructions included. And when that's the case, um, you know, when they become comatose, then the family can in, interact and, and, and actually uh, go against their wishes and, and put them out of their misery. But uh, there's also the case where sometimes, and, and this is the, the ones that sicken me, it's uh, when people... Uh, don't want any uh, medical interaction with their loved ones because of religious reasons, not because of anything uh -huh. else. You know, they don't want uh, any kind of medical help for their loved ones because they believe it would be uh, against their their religion. That's horrible. Feel like the Jehovah, right? Yeah. Um, and. But I mean, well, it's the wishes of the person. Then I'm sorry, I interrupt somebody. Yeah, the, there's a there's um, a, yeah, a that, point. Yeah. There's a point um, where it leaves the the person's ability to say what they wanted. You know, even if they left uh, instructions beforehand, if they leave someone else in charge, then that other person can change the instructions. Okay. Uh, Phantom and Brenda. I do believe that I think this goes without saying that each individual case must be evaluated differently. And you know, it, it's good that um, hospitals aren't operated like assembly lines because oh, then families will start wondering, oh hey, that family gets you know better care, you know, then my person that's in a coma or whatever why am i not getting this care it's, and the fact that our health insurance doesn't make these situations any better not a lot of families can afford to have their loved ones on all of these equipment because it, it it's going to come out of somebody's pocket someone's got to pay for it and it doesn't make it any better that you know Although each situation is evaluated differently and everyone does need a different type of care, sometimes the expense the factor of the particular care is what makes these situations as depressing as they are. Um, now, I know what it's like to almost starve to death because um, when I was stationed in Africa, our food supplies and our rations got raided um, and it sucked we had to rely on our, our wits and you know I had one guy I helped I helped one guy out drain water from a cacti or a cactus whatever. in Africa wait a minute Phantom Lion yeah. you drained water from a cacti in Africa Yes, there's deserts. Was, and yeah, it was some but sort of. I don't rem I don't like remember exactly what the plant is called. It, it we drained water from this in the desert. It's possible. Yeah, I saw it. I I couldn't do it. 
It was some sort of plant. It's not, it probably wasn't a cactus, I'm just saying. That's, can I, can I just ask some sort of plant? Where, where in Africa were you stationed? Uh, I mean, dude, I don't, I don't so Sorry, I'm, I'm just calling. You, you can't remember where you were stationed. It's, uh, it's I've not, been no. through a lot of shit, dude. Right, right. Let me just tell you exactly where so I don't screw this up. It's the desert, you know. Yeah, it's not it's not relevant to the conversation anyway, man. If you want to continue on, it's fine. You don't have to answer that question. Well, if he thinks I'm lying, I'm just saying. Is it that is that is it really that No no you you can continue. Okay. But I know what it's like to starve and you know what? To be quite honestly, at that point, you know, I did feel like dying, like physically it felt like my body was deteriorating, but you know, I was with a whole bunch of other people at the time, so I didn't really want to give up. I had some sort of hope. You know, so again, the support system does help, but like Michael was saying, the support system can that the patient has can work against them because of religious values and so forth. So you know all of these, there's so many factors when you're talking about when someone's in that uh, in that comatose. What is that that you called it? Uh, the perm, some something care, perm, what was that? Called? Palliative care. Palliative care. When someone's in palliative care like that, you know, each situation is it's, and it sucks because you know I've had family call me up because. Someone has died, and I ask, okay, what got them? And I realize that, oh, you, that there was a treatment for that. Like, well, didn't they get this sort of treatment? And they said, no, there wasn't enough money. I've had a couple of family members call about that, and it's that's it. Just it maddens me just a little bit, just a little bit. Right, friend. So, did you have something you wanted to add, then? And then uh, yeah, on the, on the subject of uh, religious objections to uh, euthanasia, um, I think there there's a little more to that argument than we are giving it credit for. Um, because for, for people who object to euthanasia on religious grounds, who have a belief that it shouldn't happen at all, um, it's not just the issue of personal hope but also the issue of our societal value on life. That's their argument. Um, they tie that to uh, procedures like abortion, but the argument is, as a society, do we value and fight for uh, every individual life, or do we uh, apply a subjective measure to what an individual is worth? Um, it gets a, I mean, it gets a little hazy when the same sort of people also support wars or support capital punishment. Um, but I, I mean, I, I think there is a consistent philosophical um, point to be made in saying that the the extent to which we allow for uh, euthanasia in our system uh, does affect the extent to which we value the fact that people have life. Well, I, I just want to say, I, you know, and I, I know I'm, I'm naysaying, and I don't know. I think that if people have religious issues with, um, you know, state-assisted suicide or even with accepting medical care, I think that they have a right to not accept that care. I don't, I don't necessarily even see that as bad if that's what they want to do. Now, in some instances, I would say it's it's ignorant, but I don't think that it's something. I, I think that it's it's a right that they have and should continue to have. Well, a Jehovah's, a Jehovah's Witness, for example, may argue that they don't need uh, chemotherapy uh, to treat their cancer. They'll just die of the cancer. But would also argue that you couldn't take uh, your wife off of a respirator. Right. So, but I mean, when it comes to a personal choice, now when we're talking about them imposing their laws or their opinions onto other people, that I can agree with, that I have an issue with, but I'm, I'm saying, what if, um, 
when it comes to, for instance, let's say, is it, I think it, is it Jehovah's Witness or is it Mormon that doesn't like blood transfusion? Or is it both? Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness. Okay, because they equate it to eating blood and such as that? No, it's, they believe the sin is transferred with the blood. Really? Okay, fair enough. Um, you know, if, if someone, if let's say that there's a spouse that's about to die and, um, so you want to know it's not getting sound. I can pause for a second if I need to. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, they're not hearing us in the chat, though. And, uh, for everybody that can hear us speaking, uh, give a thumbs up. Anybody at all? Can you guys hear us now? I'm deeped up. I can hear him blog TV. Okay, finally Graceful can. Can anybody else? Here, hold on. Let me, uh, let me Puppy you Turtle, can you hear us? No, it's Puppy Turtle here? Yeah, it's Puppy Turtle. Turtle. Yeah, get um, him in the call. This will be fun. Uh, uh, is it, is it, is it, um, is it, is it, um, 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 is it, Oh, okay. So sound is coming through. So that's just that's just Watcher Zazzle is is having a problem. I guess that did not mute for me. Damn it. That's weird. But hey, at least you all got to hear that there was sound coming. That's true. Okay, so I, I just say that if there's someone who um, is of that faith and their spouse is dying and that blood transfusion could save them, but he knows absolutely she wouldn't want that. I don't. You know, I, I, I think that it's 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 naive or ignorant in my opinion, but if that's what they want, I don't see why why everyone has an issue. Just like you got just like people would argue you don't see why people would have an issue with someone who wants to die. Well yeah, the issue is um, suffering. As opposed to the issue being uh, life itself, but the issue being quality of life, um, quality of experience. Um, that diminishing a person's suffering is a qualitative good. Um, and, and I think that in this conversation, we're, we're all on the same page. That, for, that That's our value. That suffering is bad and eliminating suffering is good. So, Fredo, in well, in the instance, and you may have answered this, would you agree with someone who wanted to commit suicide who was healthy? Would you be okay in a in a country that allowed that? Uh, yeah, I I, I would um, um, theoretically. Um, I mean, it would be kind of it would be kind of tricky um, to define your ethical and legal um, guidelines um, because. I mean, I, I think that there are moral responsibilities for people who find someone who's a little unstable and then sees them, pick on them, and drive them to commit suicide. Um, so, I, I, I mean, yeah, if, if we're talking about socially sanctioned or legally sanctioned suicide, there needs to be some kind of uh, some kind of certification or something involved. Um, but I mean, if, if we're talking just about the case of people in critical care, um, a doctor can certify that their condition will kill them. A psychologist can certify that they are of sound mind. Um, then yes, I, I have no problem with someone uh, put to death voluntarily for the purpose of ending their suffering. Okay, fair enough. Did anyone have anything else they wanted to add to this, or, or did we want to move on? I think um, we can move on. <laughs> Turbo, you had so much to the conversation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Um, did anybody else have any last words that they wanted to say on this, on, on this subject? The show ending? Or... No, the show no, no. Ending. no. The segment is, is about to end. Um, uh, violent, okay. graceful. I mean, you've been real quiet for a while. No, I don't really have anything to add here. Okay, headless? Yeah, I'm, I'm there too. Yeah. I'm good. Uh, friendo? Nothing yeah, I'm here. Not. You're good. Uh, you're good, Lion. Uh, Agent of Doubt? 
I'm good. All right, I'm gonna stop stop the recording and start a new one. Okay, I'm sorry, Phantom didn't. I, I thought you wanted to say something, Phantom. No, I was good on that on that okay. one. Um, so, is it, is it, is it, are we recording again? Hold well, on. While we're waiting for that, Agent Dow, what subjects did you have that you wanted to come up with? Um, the the subject that made me happy today was that finally, um, the Texas school books are now uh, having evolution put in them. They 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 uh, voted on it. It was eight to zero. Um, they had to include some creationist okay. uh, objections. Agent, oh. Agent. Oh. yeah. Come on a moment. I'm holding on. Um, well, well, I was asking just because when we start, we can discuss it. Okay. Right, that's why I was asking. Okay. Uh, we're starting the recording of part four here. Uh, uh, Lasoyo just asked H H Agent of Doubt why he is so happy for it today, and he will pick up. Uh, what he was saying. So what were you saying, Agent of Doubt? Um, Texas School Books, uh, just today, uh, they voted on putting evolution in them, which means all the states that buy Texas School Books will now be getting evolution, <coughs> not intelligent design. The vote went 8-0, to zero, but it was after um, a bit of uh, a trade-off. They had to uh, include a statement uh, as far as uh, creationist uh, objections to the theory of evolution, which is it, it's good that you know they're they're teaching about the objections, that, you know the, the problems they might see. But uh, yeah, it, it's just great news, and and I'm sure that the barking atheist is shit faced drunk right now because it's the only good news he's gotten in Texas since Rick Perry decided to call that huge prayer meeting. We were recording. Yeah, we also recording. You can also tell by if you go to Blog TV, it'll say in the bottom left too. Uh, so did you, did you have something you wanted to add, Panama, or not? I can I can go on with it. Um, what is that? Is the subject still on euthanasia or no? It's Michael was discussing, or Agent of Doubt was discussing how they actually added evolution now to the. Uh, to the um, textbooks. Um, okay. Um, evolution as far as, like, what point of view are we talking? Are we talking the, um, we're talking the, the, the basic, the basic theory of, like, Richard Dawkins and so forth, right? <laughs> theory of so all that shit. Ryan, you're killing it right now, bro. Killing uh -oh. it. Think I'm Charles good. Darwin. Whatever. Okay. The... Yes. Charles. <laughs> Phantom line. Are you trolling? Are you trolling? <sighs> Figured me out. All right. Okay. Um, I, I am rather I, insulted I, I by so, I Phantom line. Listen. I am rather insulted by the comment. If you've been trolling all throughout the euthanasia conversation. I am rather assault, insulted and offended by your comment. <laughs> okay. I was just, no, I was just trolling just by the record. Just your dog. To have a discussion. Chicken, calm down. Was, right? Just, 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 just now. Chicken, calm down. Just, just, just for that one comment, I was trolling. That's it. So, Michael, let me ask you this then. On this conversation to continue, did they have intelligent design before? Uh, and it, you may have said that. I may have missed it. I was talking. Yeah, they they too. were a, a teach the controversy state for a while, and uh, okay. you know they they had to include intelligent design in the the lesson plan and uh, mm -hmm. the links that I just gave the the chat room and you guys in Skype is to the story of what happened when they passed it. They still mm -hmm. have to include. Uh, the the objections from this guy named Holt. It's a, a supplement that uh, it's not teaching creationism, but it's actually criticizing evolution. Which that's all good, you know. All real science needs criticism. So, um, 
I was uh, yeah. helping set up a, a TV show with uh, uh, Dr. Eugenie Scott that was uh, going on in Pennsylvania just uh, a few days ago, and uh, she was talking about this, and uh, she's quoted at the bottom of the story. She was uh, part of the, the Dover trials that were about teaching evolution in schools, and uh, it's, um, it's really a step a forward, that. really, because... Mm -hmm. Uh, we, we were at the I point where question. flying spaghetti monsterism would have been just as valid because anything that brought up a controversy would, you know, have to be taught right alongside evolution. Okay. Phantom, you said you had a question? Yeah, I do. Um, now, when you're talking about um, evolution, yeah. I think that... We all have different ways at how we we view the world. It comes from you know how we're brought up, and I think the main argument when it comes to evolution versus creation is um, is is it is this information really going to help us in the, in the long run? Should it be mentioned? Should it not be mentioned? Should it be mentioned briefly? Um, I'm thankful that I, I'm not a teacher. And that I don't have to deal with this crap, but it is definitely something that is controversial when you talk about it. My question is, is that where do we draw the line, you know, when someone does not want to participate in such a subject? When someone, uh, for example, right, say in a classroom, we're talking about some, uh, creationism, and one student stands up and says, all right, this is bull crap. I don't want to listen to this. Uh, I'm going somewhere else. Well, I think it is an, an established scientific theory. Yeah, this is the core of modern biology here we're talking about. And even if these same students were to be homeschooled, they would still be given standardized tests in order to get their homeschooling diplomas, which would include uh, information about evolution. They would have to learn it, no matter whether their parents wanted to take them home and, t and tell them that it was all a lie. They would still have to learn what they consider to be a lie. Yes. So let me ask this. Would you guys be against a class that was required in the curriculum that would be world philosophies or world religions? that would actually discuss things like ID, Islam, Christian, just Christianity, things that the children are and would be exposed to in life nowadays. Not necessarily yeah. spoke as science, but something that, that they are going to be exposed to and at least need more information on. Would it refer to God or deities or anything like that in the first person, kind of like, yeah, he exists? No, it would be academic. It would be, this is Christianity, this is what they believe, this is why, this is Islam, this is what they believe, this is why. Kind of like how we studied uh, Greeks and the Romans and so forth, and, or at least I did. Yes. Like, uh, Latoya? In an actual theological class. Yeah. Class. Uh, uh, theological thing, yeah. That's yeah. That's, well, so that's, I, when I was in high school, we had a class similar to what you're kind of talking about, but we called it world religion. Okay. Okay. Um, where okay. World religions were just got talked about and compared and and such. So if that is a branch of that you want to get to, that some people believe this, then that's where you would put it. See, and, and Dar, didn't you have not, something to say? I'm sorry, but not in a science class. No. Uh, Dar and then me. Did you have something you want to say, Dar? Yeah, like um, I wouldn't have a problem with that. That and, and in fact, I'm actually. In, in in support of a religious class of, 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 of a class that's just teaching about the multiple religions that have that have been practiced um, by our species and the ones that are practiced today today by our species that I don't have a problem with at all what I have a problem with is when they're trying to interject in and um, history, science, um, and there's other classes when they're trying to inject their own 
a certain worldview on it that's contrary to the scientific data that we actually have. Right. Well, and I... Yeah, I definitely understand. I agree. I just I think people who who want religion all the way out of school, I, I would agree. I don't think that the schools should be teaching religion as if it's fact. I don't want them to. That's my job if that's what I'm going to teach a child. But I, I do think that because the children are going to be exposed to that, they at least need to know what it's about and not, you know, yeah, see what I'm saying? Because I, I don't think it's I think a third point of view would be very beneficial before they actually got into the world. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what Frendo just linked us in the Skype and I just put in the uh, chat for everyone else is uh, an article where a Kansas University professor was actually given death threats for trying to teach intelligent design as a mythology. And it, once yeah, you start t treating some people's religion as being on par with all the other re world religions, including the ones that are uh, classical mythologies, you will find oh, parents that will get very angry. In addition to uh, death threats, he was actually jumped. He was he was uh, physically beaten by four guys who popped out of the back of a pickup truck. Um, he had you know, broken bones, broken teeth. Uh, he was sent to the hospital and. Um, this is where I'm from. Uh, uh, Kansas uh, University of Kansas is my alma mater, so I followed the story very closely. What I found most disgusting about it was that Kansas State um, representatives actually condemned the professor and said that he deserved what he got. Um, you had a, a, a sitting state representative who w was willing to go on the record of saying, People who criticize Christianity like this should expect this kind of treatment. And this is on the university uh, level. I, I would say that anything in a high school or middle school level that would be teaching world religions would be uh, more appropriately a survey course. You know, and, and nothing that would uh, treat anything with any different level of respect. And I think uh, part, of, part of the argument starting that... Sorry? Go ahead. I think part of the argument for starting that kind of a program um, at the grade school level is that, that, that that's where it's, it's... There's the least amount of cognitive dissonance and the least conflict in exposing people to ideas so that... By the time they get up to the university level, they won't have those kinds of, of, of violent emotional reactions um, when they're presented with facts or theories or just information that contradict their worldview. They won't see intellectual honesty as an attack on their beliefs. Hmm. I, I, I see where you're coming from. I, I honestly do, and I actually truly agree with you that uh, teaching children younger to think more critically or to understand that there is more information out there than what is being spoon-fed to them through religious ideology. Um, I still think that um, adults should take responsibility for whatever mis misconceptions that they actually have and not turn that into violence. Um, I, I really think that's something like you don't, don't, don't go very harshly. Uh, Dara, may I just add one little thing? Go ahead. It's never a parenting problem. Just being sarcastic. But yeah, it's never a parenting problem. Well, I, I think that's where it all be. I mean, I don't understand why so many people, um, so many people are, are against, I, I don't like, I mean, guess the word is indoctrination, but I mean, we indoctrinate our kids all the time. I, I really think it's a, it's a, it's a parent issue when it comes to religion and, or non-religion. And it seems like so many people are against that. It's, 
as a parent, I want my child to grow up and be the best that she can and be as safe as she can. And there are several things that I intend to teach her, uh, economics, not jumping in front of the bus, and religion. I, I just, I feel those things are important. And I don't, a lot of people take issue with that, and I don't necessarily understand it. Well, because you don't have an issue with it yourself, Lisleo. You're you're happy and, and and good to go in your religion, so, and so you think your daughter would be as well, so you, it's appropriate to pass on to her. Right, but I don't think it's an issue for someone who believes in Islam to pass Islam onto their child, or for an atheist to pass atheism onto onto their onto their kid. I just, as long you know, the parent I think has the right and the the requirement of passing on what they think are best practices. Yes, Kermit. My, my my father was an atheist, okay. and he didn't pass his atheism on to me. Okay. Just ever told me about God necessarily until I got a little bit older, and and after I learned about sorry to say fiction and nonfiction, and um, yeah, it just you know it kind of sort of you know atheism for me just kind of sort of took hold on its own. Right. You know, I was never really you know told not to or, or anything like that. It just you know kind of happened right. because I wasn't uh, you know indoctrinated. Right, and, and violently graceful. I don't plan on unnecessarily positioning it that way, telling more like, oh, if you don't believe in God, you're going to go to hell. But I, I, I understand that point of view. But I mean, I, I want to expose her to Christianity. I'm not going to threaten her with Christianity. And I will um, ensure that where she goes and when she learns about it, she won't be threatened with it either. Um, actually, uh, I mean, as an atheist, if uh, I had kids, I would want them to be exposed uh, to Christianity uh, as well. Um, not necessarily the same way, but uh, ignorance of uh, dominant religion in the country in which you live, I don't, I, I wouldn't consider to be a, a positive trait. Any kids that I have, I, I would want them to understand um, what motivates and drives the uh the the controversies and uh the the other people who uh who are their country members right and you know that's the thing too I, i'm gonna want i'm gonna want her to when she's you know old enough if, if our high school or whatever school i take uh, allows it to to go through a world religions class and such as that or or encourage her to to look at other religions as well friendo i agree i mean i I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to sit here and say, hey, I believe Christianity is absolutely true, and this is why I believe it. And I hope that she agrees with me, but I mean, ultimately, if she doesn't, it's not going to be a, a, a game ender or a deal breaker for me. And I realize it is for a lot of people, and that's sad, and I don't think it should be that way. But I don't know. I actually, actually expect to get a little bit more pushback on that. I just, it seems like at least in YouTube, if you say that you're going to teach your kid a certain thing, people just go crazy. Michael, I'm looking at you. Uh, yeah, you are. Um, as far as uh, me being an atheist and, and being in a house where there are children, I actually do teach them certain things about religion, uh, mostly so that when they do get old enough and, and haven't been uh, really bombarded with a different style, they won't look at the Westboro Baptist Church and think that that's normal. Because if you don't teach them anything about religion, and they just pick up the Bible and read it literally, they would think that the Westboro Baptist Church was normal. You know, if they didn't have someone guiding them as to why that is wrong. Okay. Oh... Well. That's a kind of a hard thing to say, right and wrong. It's all, it, it's all mostly, well, Dar, it's all Dar, they have um, signs that say God hates fags. I understand that. I, I, I understand who, who they are and what they do, and I personally may not like it, and it may be a personal act of me, but late it as well. And wrong, I would not do. I would 
say that that uh, they have their own point of view and that they are entitled to it. I wholeheartedly disagree with them, but to say to say that it's plain out wrong or plain out right, you know, that's entirely subjective. Dar, you oh, are I, you are a saint oh, among gays, Dar. Yep, I, I would say that. Dar, what would you say about the nine eleven hijackers? What they did was right or wrong? Um, so, so subjectively, I would say. I, I would also say sub, subjectively, what America did was wrong. Um, after. Okay, I'm not asking about that. I'm just asking about what what they specifically, the, the hijackers specifically. Would you say that was wrong? They're wrong. Okay. I, I, that killing people is wrong. Okay, so so when it's a freedom of speech thing, it's not right or wrong. But if it if it's something that has to deal with. Um, again, killing or something that that directly hurts a person would say that's wrong. Um, I, I would say, from my own sub subjective point of view, that it's wrong. Yes, okay. like everybody's entitled to their own personal beliefs. That's fine as long as they don't use that personal belief to try to force force it to other people or to harm them. And so far, the West Baptist Church have, have not physically harmed anybody um, using their own points of views to justify it. I, I would argue that they, they've done quite a bit of mental harm. But yes, um, mental physical, harm. Physical. That's I, I, I agree with. The way that they the way that they raise their children they are totally entitled to do so but I see a lot of psychological damage uh, happening to them as those children grow up. But that is their right to raise their children the way that they want to raise them. So let me ask you this. Um, there's a reason that I was I started with the 9-11. I'm, I'm sorry, it is kind of a shock thing or, or whatever kind of fallacy it is. But what if I held a sign up saying that they were right? That, or Westboro Baptist Church, I think they've done something like this. I may be wrong. I know they have with the war. But if they held up a sign saying that the hijackers were right or had a right to do that, would them holding that up be right or wrong in opinion? In my opinion, right. Uh, what um, I wouldn't have an opinion of right on, right or wrong, wrong about that. My opinion, so my opinion is that they have the right to believe in what they want to believe in. I may disagree with their standpoints, but I wouldn't label something like that as right or wrong. Okay. So then holding up a sign saying that soldiers dying in Iraq is godly, you, that's not right or wrong. That's that's their opinion. That's their opinion, and they're entitled to it. I disagree because I don't believe that their their deity actually exists. But I don't in in a scenario like like that, I don't view it as right. And, and the link in the chat is to the actual sign held by an eight year old that says "Thank God for September 11th." In her other hand is "God hates fags." Yes, I know which sign you're talking. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I, I gotta, you know, I understand. I, I think that they have the right to do it. I would agree with that. I think that that the the First Amendment is so important that we need to allow them to to do that. I would say they have the right, but I, I would say that doing that is is wrong or evil. They, and and you're, say, and, and you're entitled to your opinion on that particular uh, topic. Right. And, and I get that. I'm not. I'm not trying. To, <laughs> I, I just. I kind of want to discuss this. This. This methodology that you come to. I mean, it's. Do you just not take these things personal? Then do you not. Do you not think that they're evil, or is it just the the freedom of speech of it that you think that they are you disassociating? I, I'm not coming off the way I want. Nope. I, I. I really try not to view things in a black or white uh, fashion, or as good or evil, or as right or wrong. Um, so in some ways I am dissident to it. Um, I, I wholeheartedly believe that people have the right to believe in what they want to believe in. Um, I have the right to disagree with them if I so choose to. Okay. I would, I would be interested, and I think we can end after this, but I'd be interested to see... I can nuke the fucking church over there in whatever Utah or no way, Iowa. Where the fuck is this? Yeah. If I could drop a bone nuke on their asses, I would. See, 
that would be you uh, physically harming another individual. Yeah, but it would feel so weird. <laughs> about eight minutes left, uh, Agent. Okay. So let's go with that. Let's go Agent, Phantom, Prindo, Headless, Violent, and then Turbo, and then we'll be done. Um, yes, uh, there are, are uh, things that uh, some of us consider to be uh, mental abuse, and some of these things are a lack of teaching children critical thinking skills, but uh, also I have a particular problem with uh, faith, and Violently Graceful would be the subject matter expert on how wrong it is to teach a child about uh Hellfire and flesh searing from bones in a in a lake of fire, in hell. So, um, yeah, we, we do have we we do have other problems, but uh, it sometimes turns into hyperbole when we say that it is child abuse. Uh, it is something that we want to work on so that there there are more positive ways to teach things to children, even if it is part of their. Uh, religion or culture in the past, but uh, when, when it gets to the, the point where a kid is uh, thinking that they are magically wrong and stuck to uh, uh, sin and, and that causes uh, depression problems in their life, I think that uh, something needs to be addressed. I mean, what about the thousands of people that it doesn't affect? Like, I mean, I never really had depression or anything of that nature due to Christianity. I would say that, that, that there are a lot of people who can go through the same experience and, and not come out as scathed as the ones that are uh, genuinely damaged from it. And uh, to say that nothing needs to be done because some people uh, go through it unscathed is not the right approach. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. did you want to add to it, um, specifically on what me and Dar or what Michael discussed? First off, I'd like to say that um, it took a lot of strength not to uh, flip out when you guys were talking about 9-11, because I truly, I just, uh, see, I'm already getting pissed because I, I cannot stand. <sighs> okay, moving on. Anyway, I, I don't really have a disagreement but my question is well sometimes situations like these require apathy and sometimes that they don't but there's a time and place for everything when for instance when drama sparks up on YouTube most of the time, where you'll find me is completely freaking out of it. All right. You will not see me involved at all. This past little drama that has just gone on, I'm only involved because I genuinely care about certain parties that are involved. And I also wanted to see what kind of results I could get if... I decided to poke my head into drama for once, and to be quite honest, I'm a little disappointed. But for situations of life and death and taking your beliefs into consideration and points of view and saying that, oh, because you, know, you believe in God or what have you, it doesn't mean that the person looking upon what you're doing is completely barred from either stopping you, all right, depending on what you're doing, or just disagreeing. Dar, if it came down to it, I have a question for you. If it came down to it, if a Muslim extremist came running through the streets and you had the power to stop him and he was screaming la, 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 with dynamite shot to his chest, you had the power to stop him, would you do it? Despite, you know, not, you know, yeah, you disagree with him, but 
he's a, he's entitled to his quote unquote opinion. Would you stop him? Okay, yeah, then that's then. my opinion with a forty-five. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> that scenario that you're opposing, or, um, it, that that you are putting out, is saying that that individual is is has the potential has 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 more of a potential at that moment to harm more people around him because of the bomb that is strapped. To its, to its chest. Under that scenario, yes, I would, to prevent that individual from harming other people. Right. Yeah, I think his issue is more, I think he's more talking about freedom of speech. He doesn't judge what that speech is, is what he's saying. Oh, I don't I've, been in, regard, but... I, I've been in conversations like this before, and that scenario has always come up. I don't know why. And I'm, I, I hate to be the person to bring it up, but it's all that's that side of the argument that you guys are, are talking about is always going to come up when you talk about subjects like this, and you have to be prepared for it. So, um, okay, that was the recording. Uh, no, that's fine. Um, we're going to go on, or Phantom, you'll end, then we'll go to Ferndale. No, nah, Ferndale. All right, yeah, the uh, anecdote I wanted to bring up here is uh, I, have, I have actually been protested by the Westboro Baptist Church. Um, the reason being I'm an Eagle Scout, and they, the, my, my ceremony was held at our church, and they would just show up and protest the church. Um, not because of Catholic abu uh, uh, sexual abuse, that, that story hadn't broken yet. Um, not because ca they think Catholics have too liberal a stance on homosexuality. Um, they just target other churches in town. Um, but see, I don't, I don't really hold it, uh, against them. Um, I believe in, in the freedom of speech and the freedom of expression. And as odious as they are, as inflammatory as their arguments are, um, they have never done anything. Well, sorry, that's a, that statement's a little too strong. But it, in terms of, of the protesting, that doesn't stop uh, anyone else from also exercising their rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, you know, that's the point I was trying to make earlier, is, is that they have the right to believe in what they want to believe in, to, um, uh, uh, to do some of the things that they actually do, because they don't disagree with their kind of new world TV. Um, they don't think... Yes, but... It's muted. Okay. Um, Is that better? Actually, there's reverb coming from Skype. So can you turn down your mic sensitivity on Skype? Um, they they have never done anything physically against another group of individuals or against another person. See, the moment you cross that line is the moment that, that you lose that right. Um, yeah, I, I think that's it. I think that's it exactly. Um, you don't have a right to not be offended. Um, you, thereby, you don't have a right to silence people. Yes. Uh, Turbo, would you want to get in on this, and then it will go to Violent and Graceful. How many, how many different topics have just been brought up in the closing section here? I'm, I'm kind of lost, actually. Yeah, it's kind of. Do you, want me, do you want me to comment on a particular subject? I can do that. Uh, do you, yeah, sure. And any one that you want. You pick. Hey, Turbo, um, question. Uh, are, are you on the green right now? I am always. Yes, he's always on the green. Green, man. It, it never changes. He functions, he functions better on the green. Uh, you, um, do you think, uh, what do you think about, 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 Friendos and I's point of view um, when it comes to people like the, the West Baptist Church. 
and um, oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when it comes right down to it, they do have the First Amendment right to do what they're doing. Um, you know, straight up, the law protects the speech that they're giving, and there's really nothing we can do about it other than <coughs> protest them back and try to shut them down. But, you know, once again, they're so hard-headed that it's not going to work. Um, <clears throat> you know, what they're doing is, is really evil. It's designed to get rises out of people and to, and to stir controversy and stir drama, <coughs> and they know that, right? So, you know, what they're doing is they're doing it with evil intent. And, and so what if it's, you know, protected speech? They're doing it with evil intent. And unfortunately, there's nothing we can do to stop them. Um, you know, except, like I said, protest them back, shout them down, you know, kind of sort of, you know, back them into the corner until they leave. That kind of crap. You know, the way the fucking, the way the United States works, unfortunately. Uh, violently graceful, and then it will go headless. Sorry, sorry guys, I'm going around in, like, clockwise as, as, as I see it here. Right, so th this is regarding Westboro Baptist Church or, or any of the topics discussed previously? Any of the topics, doesn't matter. Okay, um, you know, I had mentioned it in the text chat. Um, you know, when it comes to religious indoctrination of children, uh, I, I can't think of a practical solution for this problem. Um, be because, you know, I think re religious fundamentalism is kind of a a component, you know, of a more author authoritarian approach to um, parenthood. And, um, you know, I think that it's something which is damaging to children, but at the same time, I, I can't think of a good way to prevent that damage from happening. You know, other than, <laughs> you know, trying to help perform some kind of damage control later. Um, when it comes to intelligent design in classrooms, uh, the only place that should be taught is in a religion classroom. Um, I'm not against the teaching of religion in public schools, although I think it should be an elective subject, not a required subject. And it should be a religious studies class, not a theology class. And it shouldn't be about doctrine. I think that it should be about looking at the history of the development of religions from a historical perspective only. And um, regarding the Westboro Baptist Church, you know, they're free to speak their minds. Um, it's just... Uh, the only thing that I think people who disagree with them can do is uh, counter protest. And I've seen this taken to, you know, rather disturbing extremes. You know, I've seen video footage on YouTube of, you know, Westboro Baptist Church being threatened with violence by protesters. And I think that that's kind of sinking to their level in a way. So they should be allowed to speak. People in protest should be allowed to say they're full of crap and, and all of that. Headless? Um, headless. No comment. No comment on anything that no, we... No, no, for, no further comments, Dad. That is fair. Okay. Um, if everybody that's on the call will take a moment and, and grab their YouTube channels and... Right. Post them into blog, blog TV for everybody that's here, so that they know right. who was on the call. That's why I was given ops. Mm -hmm. That's how we're doing that. Yep, and um, for everyone, Fractal Machine here's where you can go to him. Go ahead and subscribe. You won't be, uh, you won't be sorry. And uh, yeah, some point. Also, the thing I wanted to mention, Agent of Doubt, for those uh, who are interested, actually does his own column. It's actually pretty good. I actually enjoy his writing, so uh, I put it up there in our main comment there. So if you go and subscribe to him, um, it, 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 I, I think that if That's... he gets like 100,000 subs, he's going to believe in Jesus because it'll be a miracle. So just go ahead and do that because I want him to have religion. Um. Now, if he gets enough testing sub, sub, then maybe Thunderfoot would actually talk to him. Yeah. Question, question, um, I, I, this is actually for you, Michael, um, since I don't really have a lot of time to make videos and I practically have to tiptoe around to make them, um, I was thinking of, uh, wiping off the dust on my live journal account and doing some writing there, not to compete with you or anything, but um, I can type 
a hell of a lot faster than I can edit videos. Do you think that a person like me, do you think logically that person like, that anyone can listen to a man like or read the crap that comes from this brain from a person like me? I, I would say that your your content would be more suited to associated content, Zomba and WikiNut. And you could actually uh, make some extra cash on the side. Uh, I've seen your content. Zomba and Zomba and WikiNet. I've never heard of. Them. They're all places that do have uh, revenue sharing for writing, and for poetry and for prose, in the style that you normally write in. Uh, right, and with that, I think we are actually going to end it. I want to thank everybody who did come. Um, of course, you guys, if you want to be a part of it, just send me a message, or if you have a topic, uh, I appreciate it. And, um, and I want to thank Agent of Doubt, Headless Chicken, everybody here who was uh, who was a part of this as our co-hosts. Thank you guys so much. Really quick, Fruity K is smoking hot. All atheists are babies. All atheists are babies. We should have talked about that. We really should. Everyone has the right to be wrong. Now I'm messing with you. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Y'all have a good night. Good night. All right, ladies. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and end the call. See you guys. Yeah.